G'day guys and welcome back to another video. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for stopping by and clicking on the video. We're gonna dive into the cryptocurrency news for today. Primarily gonna focus on Ethereum, where that is heading with a lot of the good news coming out. Touch on Ripple, unfortunately, it's a fair bit of bad news still coming, but there may be a light at the end of the tunnel, especially with Grayscale buying up a huge ton of XRP near these bottoms that we see. So we're gonna check that out on the charts as well. All right, before we hit the news, like button down below, it helps the channel out a lot, get through that YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you're new, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon because YouTube's forever changing and it's just going to continue doing that. So you need to see these videos as they come out, subscribe and bell. Let's move across from that. Uh, you can see the previous content that we've got out on the channel. Uh, good work to the guys who got in on Polkadot. We were looking at that at around 650. Congratulations on that. Uh, let's move across to the first things that we want to have a look at, and that is coin market cap. Let's just take a quick look at the market caps, Ethereum and Ripple, because that's what we're talking about today. 83.4 billion, and Ripple is at 10 point, let's call it 8 billion. Let's give, it, give them a little bit more. Uh, they've had a terrible week. Last 24 hours has been okay for Ripple, and we're going to cover that as well. So let's have a look at the charts quickly. Now, you know, we focus primarily on technical analysis on the channel but uh, when it comes to the news it's important to keep up with that to see how the news is reacting or how the chart is reacting to the news and that's going to allow us to understand what part of the cycle we're in currently we're in a bull market overall in the cryptocurrencies well primarily bitcoin of course uh, and that's going to help us identify the market sentiment so bitcoin 29,450 continuing to push to highs almost every other day highs not all-time highs all-time high all-time high all-time high a couple of days down all-time highs but this range is getting awfully narrow on the way up so we're starting to wedge and squeeze our way that's that's not a good point there we're starting to wedge and squeeze our way through here so I'm going to take this little high of there and you can see we burst out of that first range now we're coming up to this second range here. So where we see a top, obviously, there has to be a top come at some point or an intermediate top. This is the start of the bull market. So let's have a quick look at the XRP price while we're here, uh, 23 and a half cents. I'm gonna get into grayscale as well. You can see this bottom that was forming, which we talked about on those previous videos, uh, XRP dump, and if we go back to one of these other XRP videos back here, but I'm pretty sure it was a couple of days ago in the dump and the polka dot buy, that we saw this bottom forming, it may only be intermediate as well. So just because we saw a tiny little gain of, where was this close? Here's the lowest close. We're currently 11% up. It's nothing to get excited about in my opinion because it could easily just crash through these lows again. These are very high volume bars, so there's a lot of buying going on at those stages, and that's gonna be probably some of grayscale. So let's move across to some of the news first for Ethereum, and number of addresses holding ETH reaches a new all-time high at the end of 2020. What does that mean? It means good, more good news for Ethereum. Number of addresses holding ETH, so more people are holding ETH, or at least maybe it's the same people creating more addresses and then moving ETH to those addresses so they have multiple of them and they're not just all stored in one place because you know what happens if you lose or misplace your passwords it's all over you lose all of it so uh, maybe that's just an approach they're taking to to be a little more safe with their ethereum number of addresses holding ethereum all uh, hits a new all-time high per figures of data site glass note there are now 51 and a half million addresses holding aforementioned cryptocurrency could have just written ethereum as it keeps climbing in the context of a rally seen in the prices of most cryptos in the last week of 2020 so previously considering there were only 34 and a half ish million addresses at the start of the year up by 50 percent. so that's all that's a lot of stuff a lot of new addresses being created for ethereum now you can just click new address, new address, new address when you are on one of your wallets and you, you want to create a different address so that people can send uh, Ethereum to you and not see what else is in your other Ethereum addresses. That's also a possibility. Uh, but I don't think people are going to sit there and click the button 20 million times, you know, or whatever that is, 17 million. So 
take that into consideration. Ethereum, 84.3 billion. Next good piece of news for Ethereum, NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Art sales reach an all-time high of 8.2 million. Why is this important? Well, non-fungible tokens are primarily on the Ethereum blockchain. So they use the ETH to transact between each other, which causes fees. And we know fees on Ethereum are quite high at the moment, but people have been buying digital art worth eight million dollars in December. The previous month, November was only 2.6 million. I honestly don't get why anyone would buy digital art. I get that it's yours and then it's on the blockchain but it just it doesn't do anything and if i can take a screenshot of it then i have it anyway i don't have the original piece i get that but if i like the piece of art and i like the look of it then i can i can take a picture of it and just hang it up wherever the hell i want so i someone tell me in the comments what what is the big deal with it maybe it's just because i'm not an art person and I, if i've got art i'd rather have the physical piece hanging up on my wall here not on a digital screen or on a, on a screen on the wall I, I don't get it i know there are other little tokens and stuff like that i understand it when it comes to p it's not a non it's not a art piece but stuff in video games where you can trade i don't know weapons stuff like that that are going to work within a video game so that you can then sell that that weapon to someone else and you collect the, the profits, the gains from that, and now, now they can use that weapon in the video game. That makes sense to me, but in terms of just buying digital art, I, I don't think I'll ever buy digital art, but I'm going to accept that it's part of the Ethereum ecosystem and it's contributing towards improving the price of Ethereum. It's another space that is doing very well for Ethereum. Now, these next couple of pieces are in regards to the US just getting their hand further into your own pocket and just trying to know everything that you do. Zapo, one of the earliest Bitcoin custodians, is ending its service to US customers as of March 1st, I assume 2021, because this article was written uh, this year. Okay, so they've emailed their customers saying that they're going to close their accounts in the US. Now, it looks like it's a business decision based on what they've said here uh, with a couple of points to, to note. Our core value proposition is to protect our clients' life's, clients' life savings, mostly in emerging markets. Our target clients are people who have more than 30 grand in savings, but less than 1 million who do not want to keep all of their savings in their local currency or in their country. Example, Turkey. Turkey's uh, currency has been deflating. It, it's, it's just losing value by about 10 to 14% per annum. It is just on a massive decline. Basically, they want to help them with that private banking sector because it costs too much to do anything else with it. You want to transfer some of that money, it's going to cost you. So they want to get into that. After attaining a banking license in Gibraltar, the company realized that it would need to set up a separate organization to comply with US banking regulations in a market without strong demand for their specific services. So they've set it up, they've, this is what they want to do. To do it in the US, gonna cost too much to set up with US banking relations, all this sort of stuff. Uh, we need to go do it somewhere else, so we have to stop our services in the US. I said before, it's the US just getting their hands on your stuff. It costs too much to do anything in, in a lot of these Western countries where they just want to know everything about you. So they throw laws, regulations, uh, licensing, all of these things cost a lot of money. And for a simple service, it's just, it's too much. So they're moving on to different areas. Uh, servicing, servicing the US market would require quite a lot of effort, time and investment. There you go. Uh, it would require a separate organization within Zapo to support it and it would still yield a worse product than what we can offer internationally. Unfortunate, but that's the case at the moment. FinCEN wants US citizens to disclose, disclose offshore crypto holdings of 10 grand. So Zapo, they're trying to help people out outside of the US. Now, the US, FinCEN wants US citizens to disclose offshore. So you're a US citizen, maybe you live in Bali, maybe you live Vietnam, China, somewhere in the Middle East, I, I don't know, U US citizen, they, the US wants to know if you have crypto held somewhere else. Maybe Zapo can help you out that, help you out with that. And now they want to know what the hell Zapo is doing and Zapo is trying to get away from that. 
Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Oh, I, I'm sure they do so much in that space, right? Treasury Department wing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Americans report if they have more than 10 grand in cryptocurrencies with foreign financial or virtual asset service providers. So see how those two news articles, I, I kind of got them to link there. These guys are trying to help you out from other countries. Sure, they do other stuff as well. But if you've got 30 grand, 50 grand sitting in crypto somewhere else, US wants to know about it. Now they're going to start slogging Zapo, even they're trying to get away from it with more regulations. Get your hands off people's stuff. You can go and print more money. You don't need to know about what's going on for someone's own private sovereignty. That's the US, I'm sure Australia, or well, yeah, I do know Australia <laughs> wants to do that and they also do it in their own ways as well. Surely it's with Canada, New Zealand, UK, all of these countries. Next piece of news. US exchanges are suspending or delisting XRP left and right. So we know about this already that Coinbase is delisting XRP on 21st of January this year, 2021. Uh, and now we see Binance US and eToro. eToro is one of the big ones, but they don't have actual cryptocurrency. They just have a product that mim mimics the price of crypto. So if you want to buy Bitcoin, Personally, I would never buy it on eToro because you're not actually getting Bitcoin. You can't transfer it off that platform to your own wallet. So you don't actually own Bitcoin. Now with Binance US, Binance US, the American branch of global crypto friendly asset, da 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 da, plan, suspend XRP trading in the US. So they're just trying to work with the regulators because obviously XRP is getting sued. Announcing on new, uh, the news on Thursday, eToro revealed that US customers will not be able to trade XRP starting basically tomorrow, probably two days uh, by the time you see this here, yeah, another day, that's it. Customers with existing trades at the time will have three weeks from that date to close all open positions, the platform added in its statement. So for Binance US, the effective date of its XRP delisting is January 13th, so it's actually gone. However, the delisting will not affect the claim process for Flares, Spark, Token Airdrop distribution event. All right, so if you did have XRP on Binance US, you're gonna be okay with your Flare network airdrop. Other than that, get your XRP off, sell it, do whatever you need to do with it, uh, because Binance US, no good. and it may come to more of those exchanges. So uh, moving on, Coinbase facing new lawsuit in California over XRP. Essentially, that's the, the heading tells you what it is, the largest cryptocurrency. Uh, so yeah, they're facing another lawsuit, essentially that, don't need to go through the whole thing. It says it right there, until late this month, Coinbase sold the XRP token the value of which was entirely linked to the success or failure of Ripple Co and the managerial efforts of its executives. Coinbase facing new lawsuit. So that's no good for XRP, of course. And it's a bit of a pain for Coinbase as well. I don't think it's gonna have too much effect for Coinbase. They should get their way out of that. I mean, I'm basing that off nothing more than this article, but uh, they're doing everything they can to avoid putting themselves in the firing line by having already suspended XRP, so maybe they're gonna delist it at some point as well. All right, now this is interesting because people, are, well, the XRP army are hating on all the other cryptos and saying, well, it's, all, it's coming for everyone else. It's not coming for uh, Bitcoin, it's not coming for Ethereum because they're not securities. XRP could still be a security and kind of looks like they will be. Uh, but for Tether, Tether, Tether is registered. So USDT, US dollar Tether uh, is registered and regulated under FinCEN. USDT, not next target of the US SEC. You're okay to hold te uh, Tether, it's fine. So alleged misinformation campaign, look at that, see? Ripple's token, so they're, they're trying to fear the rest of the crypto market by saying the SEC is coming for you not at this stage, guys. Only coming for XRP. Sure, there will be others, but for now, XRP is in their targets and some think it could be one, two, maybe three years that that crap is gonna go on for XRP. Now, last piece. It's a little bit of a twist. <laughs> Grayscale. Grayscale buys huge XRP purchase. So we've talked about XRP as bad news, bad news, bad news. Now, why the hell is Grayscale buying 
a huge amount of XRP. Uh, who knows? Maybe because it's sitting at a bottom. Record-breaking XRP purchases. Information shared by the monitoring crypto whale asserted that Grayscale had taken advantage of the recent XRP developments with a massive purchase at low price. As reported by Crypto Potato in December, the US Secre uh, SEC charged Ripple for conducting 1.3 billion unregistered security offerings. Multiple cryptocurrency exchanges started delisting XRP and the token's price tumbled 70% to about 20 cents. Crypto World data indicated that XR, uh, sorry, that Grayscale had completed its largest purchase of XRP, 12.48 million coins on New Year's Eve. The asset's price reacted immediately with 20% surge that took it from 20 to 24 cents. I mean, 20% sounds cool. 20 to 24 cents doesn't really sound like anything. And if we look at that on the chart, like we, like I just saw before, that was the absolute, well, the absolute bottom was around 17 cents on Bitstamp. And we're currently sitting at 23 and a half cents. It's done almost nothing to the price. They bought, how much was it? 12 and a half million coins. What was traded on those days? The 29th of December, five, I'm looking up here in the top, 525 million coins were traded, 300 million, 160 million, 200 million. They haven't done that much in terms of the XRP price. Maybe they just bumped the price up a touch on one of these days here. Who knows? It's still very high volume overall and it could be a stopping, a, a stopping price on XRP like we talked about in the previous videos. Maybe we'll see a bounce to the moving average here at uh, 38 cents, or oh, I find that very hard to believe, but it is XRP. This thing is is wild, has very wild swings. It looks like it could be a temporary low, at, at least a temporary low for now. Very high volume on these bars, stopping bars. What I mean by stopping is it's stopping the price action. Huge dump, huge volume, market stopped and reversed. Slowly trickled down, huge volume, market stopped and reverse. That's stopping volume. So keep an eye out that eye out for that. That's really important when it comes to downtrends. That is seen uh, very often time and time again. We've got a lot of volume through through this area here here as well. Crazy looking volume, but again, huge volume, huge volume stopped and reversed. So that was some of the highest volume that XRP had seen in a very long time. Let's move it out to current volume. And uh, yeah, it's still it's still well and truly up there with current volume. So uh, XRP, I think we're going to see a slight intermediate bounce from here. If we don't, that is extremely bullish. If if the market can't reverse on such huge volume like this, it's very 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 bearish. I thought I said bullish before, but it's very very bearish. Okay, XRP. We'll dive into that uh, in future videos. So if you found value from today, you know what to do. Hit the like button down below. Hit the subscribe button also down below and the bell notification icon. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Thank you so much for sticking around, watching the video. Let me know your thoughts with XRP. Is this a low? Is it gonna come back? Where do we go to from here? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out guys.